Hello, welcome to our story on cell factories and sustainable food production. This presentation was created by Amelia Nordlund, who leads the Food Solutions Research Team at VTT, and Chris Landowski, who leads the Protein Production Team also at VTT. My name is Lawrence, and I will take you through the story they put together for you. VTT is an applied research and science company based in Finland and it covers a wide range of topics, including food and materials, health and science, robotics and space, and much more. VTT is a visionary partner for research, development, and innovation, helping enterprises and society to put new science and technology into practice. So why are we talking about cellular agriculture for food production and what does it mean? Well, Due to the expected global increase in population, along with the high demand for reducing the environmental impact caused by conventional agriculture, innovative food production solutions are a prerequisite. Cell factory-based food production provides a viable option in contributing to the transition towards a more sustainable food system. Cellular agriculture harnesses cell organisms like microbes growing in bioreactors to produce food instead of using animals and fields. These organisms can turn various feedstocks, for example, agriculture side streams into valuable food materials. Food production by cellular agriculture can be divided into two categories, cellular and acellular products. Cellular products mean that we use the whole cell mass as a food ingredient. Examples of cellular products are single cell protein, like corn, cultured meat, and cultured plant cells. Acellular products mean that cells, for example microbes, are used to produce ingredients that are separated from the cells. Currently, this technology is used to produce food additives such as vitamins and processing aids like cheese rennet. Both these categories are introduced to you later in the presentation. Cellular agriculture is a safe and ethical way to produce food. It enables antibiotic-free and year-round food production that is not dependent, for example, on the weather conditions. The production can be scaled up horizontally, which enables liberation of farming land, for example, to reforestation, Let's go through both cellular agriculture categories, cellular and acellular products. As introduced already shortly, cellular product means that we use the whole cell mass as a food ingredient. Examples of cellular products include microbial-based cell materials, also called as single cell protein, cultured meat, and cultured plant cells. In this presentation, we introduce you to innovative solutions based on microbial and plant cells. Cultured meat is not a technology field where VTT is working in or with. It's good to keep in mind that using microbial cells as food is not a new thing. It is actually a rather old concept, and as presented in this slide, the different cell-based food materials have been already on the market for decades. For example, fungal single-cell protein, corn, is sold on the food markets as an alternative to meat products. Then what is new in cell-based food solutions? How is the production designed? Especially critical for the process development is what the cells will use as a feedstock, especially how sustainable is the carbon source used in the fermentation process. In this slide is introduced a concept where microbial cell mass is grown based on CO2. If simplified, we can talk about making food from air. In this case, the carbon source for the microbial growth comes from carbon dioxide, the emission that the whole globe is trying to get rid of. As a comparison, it can be mentioned that corn production is based on a carbon source that is from cereal crops. In addition to carbon source, it's important to consider the energy and water source. The cell-based process can be sustainable only if the inputs needed for the process are sustainably supplied. According to Solar Foods, Single cell protein produced in their CO2-based process uses 250 times less water than soy and even 1,500 times less than beef production. This case introduces how we combine cellular agriculture-based products with plant-based foods, 
and provide appealing hybrid foods that fit the vegan diet. Here, fungal mycelium is successfully applied to improve the texture properties of vegetable patties when compared to plant proteins. Using plant cells as a food is a new concept. Plant cell cultures have been used previously in pharmaceutical and cosmetic industries. For food use, the interest raises from the point that the cells produce many of the same valuable molecules as whole plants, meaning that the cell material contains substantial amount of fiber, protein, and bioactive components such as phenolics. Plant cell-based foods may be proposed to be the next generation superfoods, and the technology can enable production of currently non-sustainably grown plants and fruits like cocoa and avocado. The work done at VTT has indicated that the nutritious plant cell material is applicable for various food applications as illustrated in the figures. Next, the other product category of cellular agriculture is introduced, i.e. acellular products, recombinant protein production. Acellular products mean that cells, like microbes, are used to produce ingredients that are separated from the cells. When compared to cellular products that contain the whole cell mass with proteins, cell wall materials, and bioactive compounds, acellular production systems enables production of pure compounds. Currently, this technology is used to produce food additives such as vitamins and processing aids like cheese rennet. In the future, we can also use cells to produce high-quality food proteins lipids, and other added value components. One specific example that we have demonstrated involves the production of chicken ovalbumin. This is the egg white protein that we are familiar with. The ovalbumin gene was integrated into the DNA of the fungal production host Trichoderma rhesae. The new gene expresses ovalbumin and the organism secretes the protein into culture media at a level of four grams per liter. This was a proof of concept study with limited effort. Thus we expect the production levels could go even higher if more work was put into the project. As expected, the ovobumin protein functions similarly compared to the chicken egg white protein from eggs. Functional studies were done to confirm that it forms gel structures and that it foams. Cells are living factories with sophisticated synthetic capabilities. Technology gives wide freedom to engineer them further. This allows for consideration for what might be possible. Why settle for what chicken has to offer? Might there be a better egg protein in nature? Or one that could be designed and engineered? We can also use microbial cell factories to produce natural sweeteners based upon plant proteins. Using this alternative approach to producing sweetener, could we reduce the use and production of sugar with subsequent positive environmental and health impact? Could this technology provide a viable commercial alternative to providing natural sweeteners for the food and beverage industries? With these proteins, we could consider engineering the natural proteins to improve their taste profiles. This could be done in principle to provide something better than nature. To sum up, we can state that we are facing the next agricultural revolution that can generate a lot of new business opportunities with positive impact on the environment. Cellular agriculture has versatile solutions to produce various types of food ingredients but we need to ensure that the processes are developed in a sustainable manner, including feedstock and energy solutions. Further, we need to put focus on communicating about the cellular agriculture on the consumers and stakeholders, and also put emphasis on the education. This is nothing radically new, and the key message is that we are able to design delicious foods by cellular agriculture, like the foods we eat today.